In this video, I'll show you the protocol that's one of the core practicals in IB biology, illustrating how you can separate leaf pigments by a process known as chromatography. In this example, I'm going to use spinach leaves. So the first step is for you to obtain your plant that contains the pigments you wish to separate. Break up one of the leaves into little pieces and place it in a mortar. Add a few drops of acetone and a little bit of sand as this helps with grinding up the leaves. Use the pestle and mortar to grind up the leaves and to release the pigments. If it helps here, you can add a few more drops of acetone, but ultimately the objective is to obtain a concentrated pigment in a liquid at the bottom of the mortar. After you've done this, then you need to prepare your chromatography paper. Now this does actually work best with thin layer chromatography paper, but you can also use regular chromatography paper. To prepare, you're going to obtain a pencil, and it is important that it's a pencil, not a pen, because a pen contains other pigments. Use the pencil to draw a line on the chromatography paper that's about two centimeters up from the bottom of the paper. You can see that here. At this point, you're going to place a spot of concentrated pigment on the line. Now this can be done in several different ways. Here I'm using a very small, narrow plastic pipette. It can also be done with a capillary tube and sometimes people do it um, with a very, very fine paintbrush. But the most important part is to make that spot as concentrated as possible. So in between spotting, you can dry it with a hairdryer to make it more concentrated and then spot on top. And you're gonna keep doing this until you have a very, very dark green concentrated spot of pigment on your line. The next step is to prepare your running solvent. So you're going to take the container in which you will place your chromatogram and you're gonna pour your running solvent into the container, ensuring that it does not go above where the pencil line is at on your paper. So in our case, that would be not above two centimeters from the bottom of the container. Now there are a variety of different running solvents that people tend to use. One of the most frequent is nine parts petroleum ether to one part acetone but it is possible that your teacher might give you a different running solvent to use. In any case, you would perform the same actions here, but just with the solvent that you are provided with. Once you've prepared your container, you place your chromatography paper gently into it and allow the solvent to begin to move up the paper, carrying the different pigments with it. It's important to keep an eye on the solvent front because the pigments will stop at different distances relative to how far the solvent front goes. One fun thing to do here is to record it as a time-lapse video. In these videos, you can see how the solvent front moves up and the different pigments stop at different distances along the chromatography paper. And this is going to be relevant in our calculation soon. As I said, the most important thing is to keep an eye on where the solvent front is. And when the solvent front stops moving and you've observed that for a period of time, it's not moving anymore, you need to mark where the solvent front went to with a pencil immediately. Once you've marked where the solvent front went to, then you need to measure the distance it traveled from the point of origin, which is the original pencil line that you drew on the chromatography paper. This is known as the distance traveled or moved by the solvent front. Next, you want to mark the front edge of each pigment. So that's each color and you want to measure how far each pigment or each color moved from the point of origin, the original pencil line that you drew. In order to identify the pigment, you first need to calculate the RF value for each pigment that you found on your chromatogram. To do this for each one, you want to take the distance moved by the pigment, presumably in millimetres, and divide this by the distance moved by the solvent front, also in millimetres. Once you've calculated the RF values for each pigment that you observe on your chromatogram, you can compare it against known published RF values in order to identify the pigments on your chromatogram and therefore the pigments in your leaf. For example, the published RF value for carotene tends to be between 0.89 and 0.98. So if you obtain a number within this range, 
and it tends to be a yellow orange color, it's likely to be the pigment carotene. You can see it here at the top of the chromatogram, very close to the solvent front. The published RF values are easy to research and look up, and there are many tables available for you to compare against and identify your pigments. But for example, this website also offers additional resources, including the written protocol, to help support you when carrying out this practical in the lab.